everybody, Jeff Schneider here. We're back. I'm in the new place. I'm in the new studio, the new house, and uh, finally getting settled in here. I still have a lot of work to do with uh, all of my acoustical treatment and whatnot, but I'm here, I'm in the room, so I'm back to the videos. Thank you guys for your patience. So I've got a saxophone video for you all today. It's, uh, it's about saxophone, but it's also about keeping good time. So you don't actually need to play saxophone for this, but it certainly does uh, apply for what I'm doing here. So what I want you to try is when you're doing your long tones, instead of just holding out the tone and uh, you know just focusing on the sound, you can also focus on time because it's really important to integrate the feel of time and groove into everything that you play, especially when you're holding out a note. The reason for that is because, well, you know what, I'll get into the reasons afterwards. Let's do the exercise first and then I'll explain why this is important. So we're gonna start with a long tone, just any any note will, will be fine for this, for this uh, demonstration. I'll do an A on my horn, that's concert C. So I'm gonna hold that out and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna turn on the metronome. Just a basic click. So with that metronome, I'm feeling one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's fine, that's a great place to start. But what you can do to make this more complicated is by taking out some of the beats. So I'm not gonna have it click on all four beats. Now I'm only gonna have it click on every other beat. So it's gonna sound like this. that's gonna be a little bit more challenging. It forces you to keep a bit more internal time like this. Now everything sounds the same with what I'm playing. It's just still a long tone, but what I'm feeling in my head is, in, 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 uh, in my sense of time is still this, Bah. I'm still feeling that. Okay, this is gonna be easy for a lot of you. Let's go to the, the hard stuff. So I'm gonna go to a different, uh, a different set of sounds here. This is going to be more of a drum groove, basic drum groove. It sounds like this. So just a basic kick snare, nice and slow. So we're back to all quarter notes again, but we have different uh, different sounds for the different beats. So um, obviously we can do it basic like this. Three, four. And hold it out like that. But a much more challenging way to do this is by holding out the long tone and thinking this in your head. Put this beat in a place where you, you wouldn't normally expect it to be. This is what I mean. We're gonna have it be on the off, the off beat. So like this, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's a little bit, funky now, right? We got we got this offbeat thing happening. You you kind of want it to be where it was before with the one, two, but we're forcing it onto the offbeat. So um, that's the first level of difficulty. What you can then do is put it on one of the 16th note subdivisions. So before we did eighth notes, now we can do 16th notes. That's gonna sound like this. A one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and. All right. Now, again, the first step is to be able to just count and snap it like I just did, and slow it way down if you need to. Start with the eighth note subdivision thing, then then do the sixteenth note thing. But what you're gonna do is while keeping that time uh, in place, like feeling the beat in that way. Again, it's not gonna sound any different to anybody else, uh, you know, to anybody who doesn't feel the time the way you're feeling it. So you're gonna feel the time there shifted over a 16th note, and you're gonna just hold out a long tone over it. And it's gonna to sound totally basic, but it's gonna feel really hard on the inside because you're feeling this very basic beat uh, in a very unexpected way. So it's important that you don't lose that beat where you want it to be. You don't wanna lose that feeling of the beat where you want it to be. This is what it's gonna sound like. Again, it's not gonna sound like anything special, but I'll start it off with the counting, then I'll do the long tone, you'll hear what it is. So here we go. Now we're not feeling it like this. We're not going one, two, three, four. Now we're going a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. So 
So it doesn't sound like anything special. That's what I've been saying. It might be a little bit challenging, but one, one thing you can do to help is by doing these things called air accents. You know, a lot of my Skype students have heard me talk about air accents. It's just basically, um, giving a little bit of a pulsation to the sound, kind of like vibrato subdividing where the beat is. So for 16th notes, in this case, it would be. So it just sounds like vibrato, but you're helping yourself keep where the, keep the time and keeping that 16th note subdivision. So um, this is my, what it might sound like with the beat behind us. Remember it's a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. And I'm even giving a little extra accent, air accent that is, on the downbeat, the, the downbeat where I wanna be feeling it, not where it kinda sounds like it is with this uh, basic backing track I've created. Um, so hopefully hopefully that makes sense. Now, I was, I was gonna talk a little bit about why this is important, especially for horn players, because we don't, you know, if you think about a drummer, a drummer is keeping time in all different places. You know, you've got two feet, two hands, uh, you know, keeping these different subdivisions happening. So there's a, there's a lot of, time there with a drummer and a bass player a lot of the time is just playing quarter notes so obviously keeping the the time there or um you know even a, any, anybody in the rhythm section really where rhythm is a a primary part of whatever the the music is calling for now with a lead instrument like a saxophone or a trumpet or, or or whatever you know some sort of a vocal um you don't have the the nece the necessity to keep the time like that with the instrument. A lot of the time you're just holding out a note. Now here's the problem. This is something that I see all the time with my with my students. You hold out a note and then the time disappears. Why is that? Because you're not conveying or communicating the time with your instrument. So if I go like this, there's no sense of where the time is. I mean, my tempo could be one, two, three, four, one. It could be one, two. There's no sense of where the time is. So that's why it's, it's difficult to keep time when you're just holding long tones, which is why it's important to practice long tones in this way, because not only are you working on your sound and your embouchure and everything involved in traditional long tones, but you're also focused on improving your sense of time. So you're killing two birds with one stone and uh, it, it's, uh, it's a great exercise to, to work on your time. You can practice your scales like this though as well. Um, you can just practice counting with the beat like this. It's gonna, it's gonna help your time. But you know, I thought it was especially appropriate for practicing long tones because it's, uh, you know, it's one of the areas where lead instruments like horn players uh, lose their time is when they, they hold notes and they're not communicating the beat as uh, you know, maybe a drummer would be or a bass player. So hopefully everything here makes sense. I know I talked a bit fast and I covered a lot, but it's a great exercise and I hope you guys uh, enjoy it and are challenged by it. I know I am. Uh, if you want more challenge, just speed up the tempo. It's gonna get harder and harder. So good to be back guys. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, be coming back with the, um, the loop of the day soon. Uh, some more piano videos, all kinds of good stuff. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.